Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, all that stuff. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing really well today and staying safe and healthy out there. Um, if you're new here, I'm Jim. I make photo editing tutorials, showing you how to kind of explore your creativity, tips and tricks, that sort of thing. And today I'm in Luminar 4, and I'm continuing my series around what I call, uh, what I call isolation editing challenges. So I've done a number of these. I've got a playlist, which I'll link to there. I'm pretty sure it's there. I forget, I haven't done that in a while. Anyway, um, today I'm talking about exposure blends. And, um, you know, I have to be honest, when I first started photography, I did a lot of HDR, and then HDR kind of went away from the original, like, oh my God, HDR, so cool, into a lot of landscape photographers started adapting some of those techniques, but they, um, they did it via exposure blends. Instead of true HDR with tone mapping where you're merging all the exposures, they would just... Um, customize the look of their photo by taking, let's say, the sky from one photo and the, uh, the foreground or the landscape from another and blend them together together manually. Um, and I have to admit, I uh, the first time I started reading about exposure blending and saw it, I was kind of like, yeah, uh, it seems scary. Uh, the truth is, it's really not that scary. Now, can you do complicated, sort of complex, uh, really detailed things with it? Yes. Uh, so could it get overwhelming and that sort of thing? I'm sure that it can. However, you can also do very simple exposure blends to create a better uh, end result for your photo. So I want to talk about that today and uh, show you how to do that in Luminar. It's actually quite easy and it just involves uh, layers and brush masking. So it's very simple and straightforward. Let me show you. Here's an image that I took in London and I was uh, standing in the middle of, I think it's Regent Street, uh, and I was trying to get two buses going at the same time to get that nice blur. And if you look on the left-hand side, I got a really nice blur there. If you look on the right hand side, that bus, I didn't get very much of a blur. So the next photo, and I think I was firing brackets, I was trying to time it, um, but I was firing brackets. So this one, um, I got a little bit of that bus, but I got a whole lot more of that bus on the right. So basically, if you go back, I like this photo, and I really like the bus on the left, and on this photo, I just like that section of the bus on the right. So what I did is I just took that and masked it in, and I'll show you how I do that. And my end result was I got a blended photo where I have the base photo that I really like with the lights um, of that second bus, or bus from the second photo on the right-hand side, blended in, and then edited. And so that's what I did. So let me hop into Luminar and show you how I did that. Now the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna start with this blank paper here. Simp and this is just, a I just Googled like, people have asked me this, um, I just Googled like black piece of paper or something and just found an image and just downloaded it. Just to give you an example, it's just a black piece of paper as a background. I just wanna show you what an exposure blend is um, because I feel like this visually helps represent it better than me uh, talking about it. So you have this photo, whatever it is, it's black in this case, but I'm doing it just because the contrast between this and what I'm gonna do is very significant because that's black. So an exposure blend is taking pieces of one photo and basically painting them, masking them, adding them into another photo. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna go over here uh, to my layers panel and I'm gonna say plus, add new image layer, and I'm gonna go get this texture, and I've used these textures before, these are from Ann McKennell. So um, all I wanna do is take, and I'm making this up, this is just an example, this is not an actual edit. Um, all I wanna do is let's say I wanna take some of this photo and stick it in the black base photo, right? I wanna paint some of this in. So all you do is you go add your new image layer, edit mask, get brush, and then you pick your opacity, all that stuff. I'm gonna leave it at 100, and all you do is you start painting. And you, you can just go to wherever you wanna paint something in, and you just paint it in, right? So all I'm doing is I'm blending these exposures by painting in parts of the top layer onto the bottom layer. And you notice that as soon as you start painting, um, you're just gonna see what you've painted. So in other words, the whole texture goes away and all that's left is what I've painted in. So that's what I'm talking about here. I'm gonna get rid of this and we're gonna jump into the photo and I'll show you how I edited that photo from London. Okay, so now one thing to note is if you have both photos that you wanna blend, and it doesn't have to be two, it could be three, it could be five, it could be 37, I don't know. Um, but you can blend more than two. I'm showing two because this is kind of a simple exercise as, a, as an editing challenge. but. Um, you, if you have all your photos in Luminar, you actually have to export the photo you're gonna paint in as the new image layer because the new image layer won't pull from your library. So I exported that photo. I've got this base image here. 
And I did do one thing on the base layer, and that is I went into light, and I took the exposure down slightly. I went to like negative 73 or something like that. And that was simply because you notice from that other layer, it was darker. Like I said, I think I was firing brackets. I tend to do that a lot. Um, and so I, uh, it would have been smarter for me to fire two separate exposures, focusing uh, each time with the similar settings on, on a bus going either direction. I wasn't thinking about it at the time. Um, so anyway, so I darken that, and then I'm gonna go add a new layer. So click on Layers Panel, say Plus, Add New Image Layer. And let me get out of the textures, and here's my image, and I'm gonna say open. And there you go, you'll notice that the new image is laid on top of the base image. The base image is over here, if you look on the right-hand side, it's called London Blur 2. This is London Blur 1 copy. Um, if I turn that off, there's my base photo, and there's my uh, image layer that I laid on top of it. Okay, so here's all we do is we just kinda pan it in. So I'm gonna say Edit Mask, I'm gonna say Brush, and I'm just gonna leave the opacity at 100, and all I wanna do is paint in these lights over here. Um, so I'm just looking at the streak of that bus. By the way, here's a really good thing to do if you can't figure out where everything is that you wanna paint it in, you can lower the image opacity and get a better view of it. That way, um, you're reducing the intensity of the layer that you're on so you can see some of the base layer through it. If I take it to zero, that's the base layer because this opacity on this layer is at zero. At 100, you're only gonna see the top layer. So oftentimes, I'll come in here and reduce that opacity, and then when I go into brushing, um, I'll just come in here and kind of brush this in. And so all I'm doing is basically just painting in that bus that was streaking by so that I can capture that in my final photo. Let me click on my mask. I think I about got it. Um, so I'm gonna close that, I'm gonna say done, and then usually what I recommend doing is coming in here and playing with the opacity. Um, I think I ended up at about 85 or something. Now it's a little bit darker over there, that's fine. We're gonna fix that by darkening some other areas of the photo, but that's basically the exposure blend. Now I've got a lot more to edit to show you how I balance that out because you will often find that the light may be different. Um, and you need to balance things. And so what I generally do from here is go add a new adjustment layer and make edits there. So I'm gonna say plus, add new adjustment layer. I'm on adjustment layer one and I'm gonna start in the light tool. First thing I did is I pulled the temperature down. So now I've added a new layer. So I'm working on the combined photo. I'm working on a layer above the other two. I've got base layer, right? Which is my original photo, which is basically um, the left side of the photo. Um, if you will, and then I've got my new image layer, which is basically that bus blur on the right-hand side. Now I'm above that, so I'm working on a, a, a layer that's gonna make adjustments to what you're looking at, right? So I start by cooling it off a little bit because it's a night scene, um, and typically I just kinda like to cool them off a, a tiny bit. I actually did bump the exposure a little bit, and this is really just experimentation. Um, all I'm trying to do is balance out the light, and so I'm just kind of experimenting and running around. I'm looking at my notes, because I did edit this uh, previously, of course, because you saw the final photo, and I, I took my notes to recreate that, so I'm just kind of checking these. Um, next thing I did was go Smart Contrast, and I went pretty high here, like 35, 36, something about like that. And then it's a highlights reduction, and I'm gonna go negative 28 or so there. So, so far, there's my base photo, unblended, and here's my current photo, which includes that bus blur on the right-hand side being blended in. Next was AI Enhance, and I just went to Accent AI at about 45, and that was simply because I think it does a good job of balance, balancing out the light, and it really helps um, brighten areas um, that you know may be overly dark to sort of balance the exposure, so I use it sometimes. In this case, I think it helped. Let me show you the before and then the after. It's looking a little bit better. And then I'm popping over to AI Structure and I'm gonna give it a little bit of crunch simply because it's a street and I, I just kinda of like that, but I don't like what it does to the sky, so I'm gonna say Edit Mask, Brush, and then I'm gonna say Erase, and I'm gonna come Erase that uh, Structure Edition to the sky. If you notice, uh, the sky is getting a little bit darker because that Structure Edition uh, actually lightened that a little bit and I don't want a lighter sky, I want the darker sky. So I'm just kind of hacking here. It's not a very smooth uh, paint job, but I just want to kind of do this quickly since, um, you know, this is a video. So I think that looks fine, and I'm gonna say done. So before and after on that is gonna be before and after. There you go. So I was able to keep this guy as dark as I had it. Okay, at this point I jumped over to the Pro tab, and I went into Adjustable Gradient. 
Um, I did not change the orientation. You can do that by moving this up and down, and I've got videos about that. I just left it right in the middle. But the first thing I did was just take the exposure down on the top. Um, I'm just creating a little bit more mood here. So I think I went like a negative 10, not a real big difference. And then I dropped the warmth. Here I went like negative 32 or something. And, and again, that's just personal preference. I just kind of like blue, especially in the night sky. Um, it just, it's just something I like. So I did that on the top and then I'm popping over here to bottom and here I'm adding contrast. So I go to about 28 and you notice that's darkening up the street a little bit, which is nice. And then I'm going to take the warmth down. I, I just simply feel like the bottom is a little too warm for me. And again, this is personal preference. I think I went to about negative 55, just something I like to do. Uh, street scenes at night, especially these city lights are often very yellow and I just, the color is okay in a sunset, but I don't want too much of it, especially in the streets. So I'm basically cooling it off. So here's adjustable gradient before, quite a bit more yellow as you can tell, and after, a little bit more contrasty. I think it's the blend is starting to look good, and uh, you know, I still have a few things to do, but I feel like I'm getting there. Okay, next is dodge and burn. One of the things I want to do is basically darken the street a little bit. So I'm going to click on start painting, I'm going to click on darken, I'm going to take strength down to like, you know, maybe. 15 or so. I usually start kind of low. Um, primarily, like that right hand side, it's a little bit darker. I want to darken some of this. Uh, so I'm going to come over here and do some of that. And generally, I just experiment. So I'm going to do that. I might get a little bit of this area too. I'm not, however, darkening that center uh, paved area there. I kind of like that as a leading line. I don't want to make it very dark. I'm gonna increase strength because I don't think that's enough. I'm gonna try like 25 and here we go. Getting a little bit darker here. Okay, so I finished the painting uh, of the darkening but I feel like it's a little bit too dark. So this is, um, let me show you the before. There it is and the after. There it is, a little bit dark. So here's where I bring down the overall amount which is basically an opacity slider. And I just basically reduce this a little bit until I feel like I get it where I like it. I think I ended up at around 65. So let's look at the before. There it is before any darkening is done and after, I like it. It's just a little bit darker. Um, I think I did it probably a little too heavily, which is great because you know you can come in with the overall amount and just reduce that. So I kinda like where we are there. Next up is color enhancer and that's one of the things I just like to do. So I'm gonna start with adding a little bit of brilliance, like maybe around 10 and then uh, reduce uh, the warmth a little bit, maybe like a negative 10. This is just personal preference. I just like playing with color. Not a required step, but this is something I do a lot simply because this tool is super powerful and gives me great control over color. Okay, and then the second step here is in advanced settings and I go into color balance and I go to highlights and all I wanna do is cool them off. So I'm gonna take the cyan red to like a negative 15, make that basically a little bit bluer in the highlights and then the yellow blue, I'm gonna go to like maybe 10 or 12 and just again, just kinda hitting the highlights with a little bit more blue simply personal preference, just something I like to do. So let me show you the color enhancer tool overall. So there's before, there it is, and after. It's not a massive difference. In fact, it's fairly slight, but this is something I liked. Okay, now I have finished with that. I'm gonna go back to the primary tab or the essentials tab, the first one, and get the vignette. Um, I'm gonna leave the subject right there in the center, and I'm just gonna go amount, something like negative 55 and the size like maybe you know 27, 28, something like that. And then inner light, I'm gonna give that a little bit of kick. Um, I think that helps also lighten this pathway, which I did not darken on purpose, as I said, because I kinda of wanted to leave that as a leading line. Um, but something about like that, let me show you before and after. I think that looks a little bit better. And the last thing I would do is just go into the crop tool because the photo's slightly crooked. And by the way, if you're adding layers, um, I recommend you get all that together before you do any straightening or cropping because otherwise things are gonna be off, especially if you're blending in an image taken at the exact same time and that sort of thing. You just wanna make sure that you don't um, uh, sort of mess up your image there. So I'm gonna do something about like that. Um, I wanna get rid of that light on the right-hand side and I think this could stand to be a little bit straighter, which is pretty common for me. I generally have slightly crooked photos. So there it is with the crop and there's the base image. And then if you, especially on the right hand side, that's the part I blended in. If you look there, you can see that other bus coming in. And if you wanna do the sliding window, here's the before and after. I made a big difference in the photo. One thing I might could do is get dodge and burn and maybe come in here 
inside these little streaks. In fact, I'll just try that now. I don't know if it's gonna work, but you can go back to Dodge and Burn, say start painting, say lighten, and I'm gonna go really low, like 10, and I need to shrink my mouse a little bit. Still a little bit dark in some of these areas. So the thing is, if you're trying to sell this as a blend, you just wanna make sure that the light um, looks evenly balanced. Uh, and I feel like it's a little bit dark over here. So I'm just adding a little bit of brightening and maybe a tiny bit in that shadow as well. Um, just trying to balance out the exposure. I could probably spend a little bit more time on that, but that's something I noticed. But regardless, I was able to easily blend together two exposures to come up with my final photo. So once more, there's the before and there's the after. It's a fun thing to go experiment. And so for this isolation challenge, I was just thinking about that because I do get questions about exposure blending. Um, it could be used for things like, um, you know, merging exposures, like if you take a long exposure for like a sky or a water and then a short exposure for a landscape, you could do that. It could be used for sunsets and blue hours. Um, it could be used for macro photography. It could be used for uh, focus stacking, things like that. Uh, but that's pretty much the basics of it. This was a fairly simple implementation. I may come back and do a more detailed one. I just need to get the right photos for it. And of course, I can't really go out and take any photos right now. So I'm playing with what I have, but I wanted to share that with you. I encourage you to experiment in Luminar, try adding layers, try brushing in different components, even if you're just making something up, like that black paper with the texture that I experimented with, just try that or take a photo from somewhere and mask in something. Just again, just experiment, have fun, get creative. I just wanted to share some um, some thoughts around exposure blending and encourage you to experiment with that because while we're isolated at home and you know having fun with the photos that we have in our library, we might as well also experiment with new things. It's a great way to expand it, uh, our knowledge and all that stuff. So you know how it goes, my friends. That's really it for today. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. As I said earlier, stay safe, take care of yourself out there, and I'll see you real soon with another video. So thanks for watching. Take care, my friends, and adios.